Six months ago, Nerstalgic made a video essay on Johnny Bravo. Recently, I've watched it and thought it was very interesting. It's because of this video that I now see the show differently than I did as a kid. For those of you who aren't familiar with this show, it's about a muscular man going around town trying to get a date. The problem is he's too self-absorbed and talks to women like they're sex objects rather than humans. Hey there, baby. How about you and I? Hence the need for 67 episodes. He's never able to find a real date due to these reasons. Johnny doesn't fail just because. He fails because he never learns his lesson and repeats the same mistakes over and over again. You might think, well, <laughs> who wants to watch that? Well, you could think of it like this. Johnny Bravo is the Tom the Cat from Tom and Jerry. In Tom and Jerry, Tom is considered the antagonist of the show. Johnny is hasty, reckless, and immature, like Tom is, and that's why he's never able to get what he wants. All the girls that reject Johnny are Jerry the Mouse. They laugh at his naivety, and they're always running away from him. I think that's what the creators were going for when they made Johnny Bravo. He's the villain of the show, because he approaches women all wrong, yet you don't hate the guy. You probably even want to see him succeed. That's how I feel when I watch Tom and Jerry. I just want Tom to eat the mouse already. It gets to a point when you start to feel bad for him. Recently, I've watched this movie called The Green Mile featuring Tom Hanks. It's an amazing movie that can potentially change your life. It's one of those movies that makes you grateful for the life that you have. One of the main characters in this movie is John Coffey. He has a similar body build to Johnny Bravo, but he's the complete opposite of him in regards to character. There is a reason why all the characters love him. It's because of his heart. He cares about people so much that he's willing to sacrifice his own life for the sake of potentially improving their health. Getting into someone's heart is all about who you are as a person. It's not so much about what you look like, it's about what you do, what you believe in, and how you express yourself. In the episode, The Sensitive Male, this dating coach gives Johnny a couple of pointers for what girls are looking for in a guy, and how to be a decent human being in general. Alright, so there are many videos on my channel about the importance of self-love, but what I've failed to talk about in the past is the trap of turning into a flat-out narcissist. Friends, I thought this was all about me. <laughs> Spell my name again! AKA Johnny Bravo. Not only does Johnny want to be admired, he expects to be admired. He expects women to treat him like he's God. I'm not even sure if he wants a real relationship. Do you honestly think women are attracted to that kind of macho attitude? I honestly do. When Johnny notices this older and less physically gifted man get her number with ease, he's shocked and asks him how he did it. The dating coach gives Johnny his first tip to getting a date, and that is having more sensitivity. Although confidence is widely considered an attractive quality by many, by coming off as overly confident, you give others the impression that they're just another number to add to your collection of the long list of girls that you've slept with. The dating coach tells him he needs to show the woman that he actually cares. He's able to do this by devaluing himself. Instead of trying to act super macho and alpha, the dating coach takes a softer approach in his delivery. Pardon me, miss. Gosh, I'm really not very good at this sort of thing, but I find you quite beautiful. Would you go out with me? Now, a line like that, I would argue, is too direct and quick. If you're meeting someone for the first time, it might be better to try and get to know the person a lot more. The dating coach is aware of this and gives Johnny a lesson on how to get an actual conversation flowing. Tip number two is observation. The dating coach tells Johnny a cheat code to get any conversation going is by noticing what the person is doing, reading, wearing, if they're walking a dog, etc. 
It's about finding something either about them or about the activity that they're interested in that you can both relate to. That way, you can just skip the small talk and talk about something that you actually care about. When Johnny tries to give it a shot, he fails because his opening line is another cat call, and she immediately gets turned off by it. Hey there, foxy lady. Oh, hello. That's a fine looking weenie dog you got there. Mm, thank you. Now, if he would have just opened with a dog compliment, he would have gotten her attention. But because he shows her his intentions too soon, the woman knows to not take him seriously. Plus, it wasn't even a genuine compliment. Johnny doesn't care about the dog. He doesn't care about developing an actual relationship with this woman. He just wants sex. Even the dog can sense this thirsty attitude. One more point I want to add to this section is, if there truly is nothing about her that's worth having a discussion about, other than the fact that she looks pretty, then that's how you know the attraction is based on lust and not love. Now, I will agree, you should be physically attracted to the person you're dating, but my point is, it's easy to let good looks blind us from the truth. It's like trying to buy a random car that you haven't even test driven. See if you actually like the car first. See if it's even functional. I have a video in the works about how lust can deceive us. But for now, let's move on to tip number three. This episode's third tip is to express your feminine side. But what the dating coach really means in this context is giving your creative side a chance to shine, as opposed to Johnny's way of doing it. I bet if I went over there and flexed my pecs, she'd pour that phosphate down your pants. Fella, you're too masculine, you know that? When he tells Johnny he's too masculine, he means he relies too much on his muscles to impress girls. Rather than relying on his physical appearance, the dating coach encourages Johnny to express the inner part of himself. For example, dancing, instruments, poetry, singing, finding a hobby that you're passionate about in general. Creative ambitions are not only good to win over the hearts of others, but it helps you develop more skills that you can use for the future. How does Johnny screw this one up? Well, he does it by becoming too feminine. The woman doesn't even reject him, she just leaves while laughing her ass off. The dating coach's fourth tip is to use manners. Johnny always catcalls the girls before he meets them. Catcalling can come off as very offensive, rude, and just lazy. The message here is very simple. Treat girls with respect rather than sex objects. If she's busy, respect that. If she rejects you or has a boyfriend, respect that as well. Respect that she has a life of her own. The dating coach's final tip to Johnny is to be sincere. To be sincere means to be honest, pure, and true not only to the woman, but to yourself. It is to be as genuine and real as possible. Real not only in the words that come out of your mouth, but also in regards to eye contact. Keep your eyes on her face. That's the proper hemisphere. Side note, to all of you on NoFap, stay on NoFap. The benefits are real. Johnny Bravo's life revolves around desperately searching for a date. That's pretty much all he does. This is such a sad life and doesn't have much meaning. I'm not going to sit here and say dating isn't great. It can be, but that's only with the right goal and intentions. We never question our intentions. We never ask ourselves, what do we honestly want out of a relationship? What are we trying to do? What's the plan? What's the end goal? Is it just to have sex or is it to potentially marry someone in the future? I say this because I don't want you guys to waste your time. Johnny Bravo could be doing better things with his time that would actually be more beneficial not only for himself but for humanity, but instead he dedicates his life to picking up girls and has nothing to show for it. That my friends is the biggest simp in history.